Good morning from Aboriginal Beach Resort. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana baby, right here. It's 6 17 in the morning, and I'm awake. And I just want to say thank you, God, for today, for the gift of life. But yo, I've never been tired this way. It's like I've been on the road since Thursday, and today is actually my last day in Keta. And thanks to Aboriginal Beach Resort for hosting me. Listen, in my room, it's six o'clock, it's so dark, and I came out and it feels like it's eight o'clock already. Jill, what, how are you? You're awake already? I'm the guy at six o'clock. You're living at six? That's what he told me. Who told you? We go, we go, so, oh, hi. <laughs> hi, how are you? Good. How was the night, dog? You're not living at six. What time will you You're living after breakfast. I want to make sure you eat before you travel. All right. So what time? What time is my breakfast? Here? I don't know, but breakfast is not six o'clock. Okay. So okay. yeah, I just so, you, so I was checking. No, I was checking. I came out here to see if we're leaving here with our bags today. No, we're just we're we live, no, we we're traveling today. Okay, okay, okay. So after breakfast, we're going to another town. Oh, so we're and, yeah, we're going to the capital. Okay. Right, that's what I know. Yeah. All right. All right. So Thank good. You. All right. So it's such a beautiful resort. First time I saw this resort was when I came to um, Water Region for the first time. And I was told that if you want to see the best, clean, nicest beaches in the whole of Ghana, you have to come to the Water Region. But the first time that I came, I never saw that until I visited this resort. It's so pretty. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. These are monkeys, you know. I used to have the same monkey as a pet. Can you guys see this mark on my hand that I've done tattoo on it? It was actually caused by this monkey. Yeah, I had one of these monkeys as a pet. And at the end of the day, the monkey was mad at me and gave me that mark. And when I went to China, I decided to do a tattoo on it. Please, next time, I don't think I'll ever keep a monkey. But anytime I see a monkey like this, I always miss my monkey. And the name of my monkey used to be called Jackie. Hey, Jackie, how are you? Hello. Oh, hi. Oh, that's so cute. Look at the cute one. Eh, 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 eh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Say hello. You want to say hello? Ah, come on. You don't want to say hello. Anyway, got to go back. Um, you know what? Daily routine. Um, I always love to work out these days because I feel like I'm becoming more healthier. And whenever I wake up in the morning, I'm so energetic because I work out, you know? So it's been four days since we started traveling and I've not worked out yet. And uh, I just wanna um, take today since the beach is right here. Let me just use this as an opportunity to work out before I have my breakfast. So yeah, before I show you more of the resorts, come work out with me and um, I'll take you guys around. So this is the result and right here is the beach that is where I'm gonna work out and look at my feet bro this beach is the cleanest yeah I, I'm walking and you don't even see a single I mean litter on the floor like no one is literally littering this place that's why they said that it's the cleanest but yeah um it's always feel good to be around the water or being around the ocean even though i'm the best swimmer in the whole world but i'm the only swimmer in the world that doesn't touch water if you don't understand argue with your computer but yeah and so they do fishing here man so uh more, the major uh occupation in here is more of um uh, fishing and farming and that is what actually drives the economy in this part of Ghana I love being here um, I don't even know what to tell you guys it feels so therapeutic out here the serene environment so peaceful it's not so crowded like um, the way the main city is so crowded so if you're looking for a gateway uh, what do you call it a weekend gateway choose the Vota region choose the Aborigin Beach Resort and come have a peaceful time especially if you are that type that always argue with your wife 
get out, my brother, get out, because you need to live long. Get out and come and hide here for a weekend and then go back. Or maybe when you come with her, leave her along the sea and then you can stay in, your, <laughs> in the resort and think about yourself, yeah? But anyway, like I told you earlier, it's time to work out. I'm here with um, Steven. He's gonna do all the shots. But yeah, let me just work out. And um, if you also work out, put on your working out gears and let's work out together. Or if you don't love workout, maybe grab a bowl of fufu, a bowl of banku, a bowl of rice. I mean, sit behind your uh, PC and let's work out together. I mean, eating is also workout. That's why I love food, man. Like, you see the movement of the hand, then it, it makes your arms grow bigger, the movement. I'll see you all when I'm done. Thank you. Like for the past four days, I've never worked out, and working out today feels like I'm starting all over again. Don't give up. So whatever you're doing, set your mind on it. Don't give up. Stay consistent. Keep doing it. Trust God. You will make. Thank you. What a good day. It's time to go freshen up and continue the video. Wanna show you what to expect whenever you come to Aboriginal Beach Resort. But I wanna tell you something, yeah? The manager of this hotel is exceptional. I mean, she's amazing. And she's no other than my own in-law. Yo, I feel like Kenyans are really good when it comes to like hospitality business. I've been to so many countries where the managers of a resort or a hotel are Kenyans. And anytime you see a Kenyan managing uh, your hotel or resort, everything feels different. I'm not saying this because I'm married to Kenyan. I'm saying this based on experience, yeah? So, I mean, I know that as soon as I said this, the Kenyans are like, oh, show us our in-law. Your in-law is in Ghana and she doesn't want to go back. I feel so good. I have only two hours to spend in here. I spent a night, two hours to spend in here and I'll be on my way to Ho. Volta region is a serene uh, region. Um, it's, a, it's, it's so green in here. So yeah, come with me. Let me go freshen up and I'll talk to the manager of this. Finally refreshing up, it's time to have breakfast, but I love the fact that in my room, there is a portrait of the beautiful Amamad, the queen from the northern part of Ghana, smiling with me. Yeah, I mean, if you see that queen smiling with you while she's sleeping, you will love to, I mean, have a wonderful dream. Yeah, so it's breakfast time. Everyone is here eating. Hey! My brother. What's up, bro? You're eating without telling me, man. Oh, man. You slept too good, bro. I slept too good. Mm -hmm. Why? Why can I sleep too good, bro? Because you are the latest to the table. <laughs> I think I was the first person to wake up. In his defense. <laughs> how how are you? I'm good. You're feeling so calm this morning. Me, very calm. Me, very calm. All the time 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 calm. Is that the only breakfast you're having this morning? I should have saved some of the food last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have 
steps out of the last night, man. Jeez, this is an English breakfast. And um, meet our main man, who has been taking us around, exploring the uh, beautiful Keta with us. And he's actually a writer. So all these books that you're seeing right here, he those, are, those are your copies? Those are my copies. Yeah. You can come to Keta and meet a writer without going away with... Uh, All of them. Uh, that's my intellectual property. Intellectual property. Copy, where can, copywriter. Where, where can we get this? This is online now. This is not yet online. There are three others online. I oh. have seven books to my credit. Okay. And um, where can we find it? Yeah. One is on Amazon. The other one is on Seller. Okay. Yeah. Seller.com, Amazon.com, the Kindle. He is a real ambassador of um, Keta because he talks about Keta with passion. And I feel like if the entire country, the people from the country can be ambassador of the country, Ghana would not be where we are right now in terms of tourism. And yo, the breakfast is still coming. Uh, can, can we have a heavy breakfast? Oh, she's smiling. I, I hope you have a heavy breakfast. Uh, oats. Jeez, man, I'm a Ghanaian. I don't. It, it, it should give me some akpene this morning. <laughs> no akpene this morning. <laughs> Thank you. I don't like showing you guys what I'm eating, so I'm not a big fan of telling you. Oh, this is egg. This is chicken. This is. I'm sorry. I'm gonna eat my food, and I'm gonna tell you guys later. Peace out. I feel like you're living one of the biggest dreams of a visionary man that ever lived. Yes, well... You, you know that visionary man? I think you have him on your shirt. I have him on my shirt. Yes. I decided to wear this shirt because the Pan-African dream is still alive. She is my in-law though. Yeah, if I say in-law, definitely a Kenyan in-law. Oh, you're not my in-law. No, we are all <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> all Africans. All Africans. I mean, what brought you to Ghana then? Uh, well, I wanted a change of scene. I mean, uh, it's my dream to go to every African country and mm. Ghana was a good place to start. And when I came here, I really love the people. The place is amazing. And so I stayed. I, I want to know, yeah, um, you're here. There are so many people that would love to come in here, yeah. Tell us what makes Aboriginal Beach Resort unique from other resorts in Ghana? Well, for starters, uh, Borygens Beach uh, takes into account the location that it is in and it takes great advantage of that. For starters, the beach mm. front property. Mm. It's a very serene, very pristine, very clean. And the people around here are very friendly. So we incorporate that African hospitality into okay. the resort offerings. So when you come here, you have the a stylish setting of a world-class facility rooted in traditional African hospitality. So that is, you are home, um, away from home, but you're very, very comfortable where you are. I really love the architecture of um, how the buildings have been, have been designed, but is it a Ghanaian owned? Though? Yes, it's fully Ghanaian owned and from here. So the name Aborigines means um, it's indigenous to the area. Oh. The owner is from here and he is giving back to the community and developing the place to, as a pass, uh, way of giving back to the place where he grew up. Oh, so he was born and raised in here? He was born here, yes. And he's lived um, around and he wanted to come back here to the roots and establish something, something like a stronghold to, you know, help the future generations to have something in Keta. What kind of services do you provide in here? So we have accommodation um, services, we have uh, leisure activities, we have uh, conference and meeting rooms available. So we have basically when you come here you can have everything that you need. So you can stay here for, as a residential, um, you can even work here because we have high speed internet. So when you come, if you're coming for holiday, okay. we have that. Uh, 
covered for you. If you're coming on uh, work retreats, company uh, workshops, we have that as well. If you're coming for um, a work remotely uh, kind of gig, we have that as well. So when you come here, everything is sorted in here. And we try as much as possible to customize every experience for all our guests. So it's not one size fits all. We try and cater to everybody's unique uh, requirements and needs. Is it affordable to live in here? It's very um, economical and our, our rates are very, very competitive. And it's value for money. You get what you pay for. Fitness. W will you agree with me that Kenyans are very good when it comes to hospitality? I think Kenya has had a long history of being uh, uh, in the hospitality industry, that's what I had like to put it. And we have a lot of experience in the in the in the sector. Uh, Ghana has a lot of potential in terms of the resources that are available to be monetized as um, uh, tourist uh, destinations, mm -hmm. where we can have people come in and just you know enjoy the place and then be. Uh, get good service in mm -hmm. terms of culinary um, experiences because the food here in Ghana is very unique. It's very um, African. It's I, very African. I, I, guess, I guess I enjoy our food more than the Ugali and the Nyamachoma. Well, you do have Ugali here, so yeah, that, 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 uh, that makes me a bit more, <laughs> <laughs> a bit less homesick. Yeah, I but mean, yeah, I love the variety yes. of the food here in Ghana and um, the cultural um, uh, traditions, the dances, the drumming, all that incorporated, you can have a very nice uh, cultural experience when you come here to uh, Aborigines. We normally do have those uh, events where we bring in the cultural drummers. We have storytellers who come and tell stories about the place and uh, the history of the place. It's a very rich culture, very dynamic um, uh, storylines happening at the same time. and. We do do those tours for cultural uh, involvement, for people to come and know, okay, this is what uh, this place is about, this is the history of the place, this is why this is here, the indigenous uh, species here, the, everything inculcated. So we do, do have a lot of potential here for you know, tourism. And I, I, I'd like to show that to everybody who would be interested in coming here and it's it's a worthwhile trip to make basically based on your experience in um, the tourism industry and the hospitality business as a whole what do you think you know ghana can do to improve on tourism business i mean even if i, I don't i don't like comparison i would have asked you like what, what is the difference between tourism in kenya and tourism in ghana I don't like comparison, but I'll be happy if you can tell me that. Well, um, without comparing, what I'd say is um, the potential is there and what the country as a whole can do is recognize it because I don't think that they've actually seen it, what the potential is and what this can do. First of all, coming here to have a very um, clean beach that is not um, crowded. That is, first of all, a tourist attraction on its own because I know people in other countries would die to have that kind of space to be able to entertain, to uh, come and just relax on a beach that is not secret. So if that is recognized, we recognize the potential, then the policies for maintaining and developing those resources and come into play, which then adds to people appreciating the fact that, yeah, this is actually uh, something that is of value and people are paying money to come and have experience it or see it, if it's a monument, if it's a, a fort, uh, something with historical value. Mm. Once those things are maintained and this policy that governs how and they're treated and maintained, mm. then the tourism industry can come up and then the hospitality industry then grows around it. So you have resorts because people will need to come and stay somewhere. You have restaurants because people will need to eat when they're there. That's how you grow the tourism and hospitality sector in any uh, region. Being an African, if you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? I would get rid of the borders. There should be no 
the limitation to where one can go, how far they can go, and what they can do when they're there. I think that um, this is one land. We are all the same, and we have common goals and common interests. And I think being able to work together and eliminating those barriers that um, come into play when you're trying to do trade with someone or where, work somewhere else, which is different from where you're from, those kind of barriers, they keep the place, the country, uh, the continent uh, stifled down and the growth is just not there when you have so many opportunities that you can um, capitalize on. Like, the, for instance, um, there's no reason why I shouldn't be getting my fresh milk straight from Kenya every morning here in Ghana. There's no reason why cocoa shouldn't be quickly taken to Kenya and somebody doing a milk so chocolate so yeah, without all those taxes and barriers that come into play when you're trying to uh, get things done. So if we could just eliminate and make it one, um, one country, I think that would be I, I very know, beneficial. I know that the youth of Africa are really yearning for this and I believe that it's definitely going to happen. I mean, this is why I said that Kwame Nkrumah was visionary, a seer, a prophet. If the leaders those days listened to this man, wouldn't have been suffering right now. But I believe that the time is coming, the revolution has already started, and very soon you'll walk from here to Kenya. I hope so. <laughs> Without passport and a visa. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. Peace out. that I do is that I meet my audience everywhere and um, he was even watching my video when I met him hi how, how are you doing? doing I'm doing fantastic it's good to see you pleasure is all mine you that's what am I right <laughs> Should I turn this off <laughs> I said, I've been coming here for over 22 plus years I am running away from both the virus, although I have been vaccinated, I'm one of those who decided to do so, so don't hold it against me. Uh, I also, uh, like I say, running from the cold weather, so I'm here on a work vacation. Mm. This place has a fantastic uh, Wi-Fi system, so I'm logging on their system as well as my own to get my work done. So for those of you who don't realize that uh, the world is never going to return to pre-pandemic time. Mm. A lot of people will be working from their homes, mm. doing their work virtually, which is basically what I'm doing now. But uh, I'm happy. It's uh, for all of those who may see this in the U.S. Uh, around January, February, it is uh, about 80, 85 degrees right now. You can see I'm sweating a little bit. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts in February with flip-flops, so you all can eat your heart out. That's one of the advantages of coming to Ghana during the winter months in the States. What is what is that one thing that you love about being in Ghana? The people. The people are friendly. I feel, uh, obviously, uh, 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 my genes uh, connects with uh, this country, this continent, and I just love it, you know. Uh, every year around this time, I plan to be, if not in this country, uh, at least on this continent. And eight times out of ten, I would probably stop here first <laughs> before I head anywhere else. All right. Yes. I, I want to say thank you so much for you, talking to me. And thank you, you so much you, for you, watching you, my videos. You know, you, I really you, appreciate it. You, you're welcome and continue the, the great work you are doing mm -hmm. and uh, letting the world see uh, Africa in its positive light. There's so much you can do here. The people are friendly. Fortunately, for those of us who only speak one language, mine just happen to be English. And most people, I would say, most people in Ghana speak English. So you can get along and get around uh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm <laughs> heading out and uh, I'm going to see you okay. some other time. Thank okay. you. Now, now I'm really going to be watching the video, so I'll see if I can see the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. So I got in here and uh, 
I, I was just walking around and I can hear my voice in here and realized that he was actually watching me and I had to just pop in and just go and say hello. So yeah, um, I had a very good time at Aborigine Beach Resort. I really had um, a great time. It's so beautiful, serene environment, reception wise, it was amazing. And I believe that if you want to have um, a special time, a quiet time with friends and family, choose nowhere but Aborigine Beach Resort. Get out of Accra, you know, go spend your money out of Accra because whatever money that you're spending here is going back to the community, it's going back to uh, an African man's pocket. That is what I believe in because the owner of this place is an African indigenous from here. Secondly, the people that work here are all from here. So creating employment for his own people, which I think it's amazing that um, an indigenous man is doing this for his own people. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and be part of the awesome family. And I'll see you all in the next one. Aya Maya.